After when you were starting to talk in your relationship in a more truthful manner, what did that mean that you had to admit? I mean, you just said that part yeah. of it was a disconnect between who you were trying to be and who you really were. So that's a persona yeah. issue, right? So you think maybe, and everyone has this proclivity to some degree, is they're deeply um, self-conscious and uncertain. And so instead of allowing the person they're with to connect with that underlying uncertainty and inadequacy, they act out a persona. Yeah. And then the problem is, is that well, perhaps the person falls in love with that persona, but there's no real connection there. It's it's an artifice. And, you know, having said that, one of the things that Carl Jung, the great psychotherapist, said about a persona is, don't be thinking that you're better off if you never formed one. So for Jung, it was a voyage from, say, undifferentiated self in infancy and so forth through persona to authenticity. Because you have to act out your ideals to some degree, right? And, and, and you also have to formulate a avatar of yourself in some sense that's a mediator between you and other people in casual social encounters. Like, you don't want to walk into the bank and have the teller tell you about his or her day when you say, how are you doing, right? I mean, now and then that can happen, but generally it's too much intimacy too quickly. And so you need this this functional shell mm. but the problem arises when that functional shell is all that there is and then the real person underneath is just desperate and and unhappy because nothing of what's being acted out reflects a true underlying reality I'm trying to get a hold of the Disney people at the moment because I want to do a lecture series on Pinocchio because I think Pinocchio is brilliant work of art um and if you're a puppet and an actor, and Pinocchio is both at times in that movie, both a puppet and an actor, so why an actor? Like, why is there, why is there something wrong with being an actor? Well, the first question is, well, who sets your role? And then the second question is, who's pulling your strings? So you've put on this front that is there to make you popular and sexy and desirable and to mask from yourself your own inadequacies. But that's a role. Well, who wrote it? And for what purpose? And so Jung said, for example, that we all acted out a myth, and whether we knew it or not. And, you know, maybe you're acting out a tragedy. Maybe you're acting out Narcissus. You don't know because you've put that, you've put that on yourself in an attempt in some ways to deliver to people what they want, or more accurately, to look as though you're delivering to people what they want. And it's not nothing to do that, right? Because at least you're attempting, in some sense, to adapt to the social world. Someone who's really infantile and dependent, someone who's never left home, part of their problem is that they haven't crafted a persona. So you don't want to denigrate it entirely, but it's no substitute for the real thing. And it turns out that not only is what we want from each other the real thing, but that's also the adventure of your life. And so if you aren't truthful, and that means, unfortunately, especially at the beginning, when you start to be truthful, it means deeply coming to terms with your inadequacies in humility. So it's very painful. Without that, you don't have the adventure of your life. You have the role that has been, that you've acquiesced to. And that'll take all the meaning out of your life. For example, let's say you're at a dead end in your job. Okay, so I don't find my work meaningful. All right, so that's a problem state. It's like, well, why not? I find the work I do repetitive and boring and without spirit. I have a bad relationship or a neutral relationship with my boss who doesn't know who I am. Um, I have problems with coworkers. All of that needs to be differentiated, right, and analyzed in detail. So we might say, for example, let's say you believe that you're undervalued at work, and maybe you are. What you need to do is you have something to say. And we would have to figure out what it is that you have to say. But it would be some variant of, I'm bringing more value to the table than I'm being compensated for. And that's demoralizing me. And it's also not good for you, you being my boss, because if I'm actually more valuable than is being recognized, then the fact that you're not valuing me properly means that I will become demoralized, I won't work properly, and you won't get the best out of me. 
So it's bad for both of us. And if your boss is in principle not amenable to such a discussion, then what you should seriously consider doing is finding another job. Okay, so let's say we're going to set you up for this. Okay, this isn't like next week's enterprise, man. This is your life. So the first thing I would ask is, well, do you have your resume or CV in order? Well, I haven't typed it up for three years. Well, what do you think about bringing it up? Well, I'm pretty nervous about that because there's some holes in it. And, you know, I didn't do so well in college and I'm kind of embarrassed about my resume. It's like, okay, bring it in. Let's go through it. Let's, let's, let's at least update it. Let's look where the holes are. Let's look at where the inadequacies are as far as you're concerned, right? This isn't my judgment. It's your judgment. Let's walk through those judgments and see if they're warranted because maybe you're just too guilty and ashamed and self-conscious and anxious and you're not, you're looking at your resume more critically than someone else would. And maybe there's some holes that you need to rectify. You know, you're, you're at, you're, you were two courses away from your BA and you dropped out or something like that. Well, maybe we need six months to address that. And at least even if you can't be fully educated, you could be taking some courses online. And so when you went to a new job interview and they said, what about this hole? You'd say, well, I, I came to terms with that six months ago and in an effort to rectify it, I'm taking the following courses and here's my plan for completion. That's a really good answer. And anyone with any sense who's interviewing will accept that as an indication that although you're not perfect and who is, that you have a good plan and that you've thought it through. Like that's the kind of answer that in all likelihood will cement your candidacy for the position. Okay, so now... You're gonna to go to your boss. Well, you have to have your CV and your resume in order. And you have to be able to stand on it solidly. And which at least means that you're prepared to address the inadequacies in a credible, realistic, believable, and truthful manner. All right, now what you do is apply for like 10 jobs. You don't have to take them, but maybe you have to go to an interview or two or three or four and maybe there's a bunch of opportunities out there for you that you didn't even know about. And maybe someone offers you a job. And so now, now you can go to your boss and say, here's the situation I'm in here at work. Um, here's my evaluation of the problems in relationship to me. Here's what I could do for you if you gave me a 40% raise and the opportunity to progress, but I'd like to see a plan for that. And... Um, I've been looking for other opportunities before conducting this discussion, and I have some. Well, then, if your boss treats you with contempt at that point and doesn't listen, then perhaps he or she is a little more narcissistic than might be optimal, and it's time to find a new job. But this isn't something you do trivially. And so when you're doubtful, say you're trapped, you ask yourself, well, why am I trapped? And that's a hard question, right? Because some of it's your own inadequacy, a lot of it. And all of the part of it that you can deal with is your own inadequacy. So even if it's unfair, you know, even if you're hemmed in for any number of reasons, inappropriate, like ethnically predicated oppression, let's say, or maybe you live, at, you're in a, a workplace that really is sexist in some fundamental sense. Well, that's not good, it's not just, it's not fair, it's, it's not meritorious, all of those things. Man, maybe you shouldn't be there, but what you can do to begin with is every bloody thing you possibly can do to put yourself in the most virtuous and powerful negotiating position possible. And you have to think like a snake in some sense to do that. You gotta get the details right, you have to be prepared to bite, and, and you have to have your eyes on the prize, so to speak. And people aren't taught this sort of thing ever, really. They're not taught how to negotiate. They're not taught how to goal set. They're not taught how to conceptualize appropriate success in some broad sense. In some sense, that's what the humanities are supposed to teach people. How someone is to build their self-awareness. It's almost like the unknown unknown. If you don't have yeah. it, how do you build the thing? Well, I know a good exercise for that. It's like a prayer in some sense. In fact, I would say it's proper prayer. If you want to know something about yourself, sit on your bed one night and say to yourself, you got to mean this, like you got to be desperate. This is no game, this. It's like, my life is not everything I want it to be. 
And perhaps it's not everything that I need it to be. And by need, I mean my life is so unbearable that the suffering that's attendant upon that is make me nihilistic, cynical, bitter, resentful, homicidal, genocidal, and unable to have a good relationship, pro prone to punish people for their virtues because of my jealousy, uh, driving the proclivity to see evil everywhere except within my own heart. Like, these are problems, man. And you ask yourself, you sit on the bed and say, okay, man, I'm ready to learn something. Like, what, what's one thing I'm doing wrong that I know I'm doing wrong that I could fix that I would fix? It's like, you meditate on that, you'll get an answer. And it won't be one you want, but it'll be the necessary one. You know, and it, it's often something that will point you to small things. So Carl Jung said, people in the modern world don't see God because they don't look low enough. And so imagine you're in your messy bedroom, you know, and you're sitting on the edge of the bed trying to have an honest dialogue with yourself. And the little voice says, you know, it's pretty disgusting in here. And you think, well, I'm way above such trivial niceties as organizing my room. It's like, well, that's pride. That's arrogance. If you're above organizing what's actually yours, how in the world are you ever going to organize anything else? And so you get on your knees and you think, well, it's time to, you know, take a brush to the toilet. And maybe that's where you start. And so, and that works, like that works. You start making those micro improvements, like real micro improvements, real on the ground, actual micro improvements to things you know that are wrong, you'll improve unbelievably rapidly.